Uh, two power station failures on recent trips have cost me money, time, and have damn near ruined a few trips. So I was sick of it, and it was time to build a proper dedicated power system in the Gladiator. So I'm gonna show you what we built uh, using a light time system with their battery and charger and all that, taken on a seven day trip here in Colorado. Check it out, make sure everything is working. Uh, as I mentioned, we've had two power station failures. The first was our big, uh, my, I, one of my favorites, the Blue Eddy Elite V2. This was a 2000 watt hour system, uh, tons of power, and the fan went out in it. No big deal. They, I contacted them, they sent me a label, and a truck showed up to pick it up, and off it went, and it's been five months and I've never heard from them. I have no idea what's going on. I have emailed and emailed and emailed and I've never got a response in five months of that power station being gone. So I didn't have that one. So for the Alaska trip, I took an Anchor Solix C100, which is a thousand watt hour system, which was plenty of power for the trip. I mean. It, I knew it might be cutting it close if you know we had a lot of uh, bad conditions, but it, it was gonna be fine. I knew it was gonna be fine. I had plenty of solar power and all that, so wasn't too concerned about it. And the DC input port on that unit fried halfway through the trip, meaning I had no way to charge it through the charger one or through solar panels. I could only charge it through AC power, which, well, there isn't any AC power in here to do that. So it was a bit of a challenge keeping things running on our Alaskan trip. I have videos on that, on uh, what happened. Check out the link above and uh, I'll, I'll, you can just learn more about what happened on that trip. So for our upcoming seven day Colorado trip, the system in here, like I said, is 200 amp hours of power, which should be way more than enough. I'm going to read off what it's going to power. Uh, we got the canopy system, which is basically just the LED lights that are inside here. There's electrical components, but they just for USB and things. So I can charge my phone. I can charge camera batteries. I can um, use the USB ports for charging other things. So there's, it's more than just the LED lights. Uh, at night, I run a CPAP machine. Uh, the Travoka 45 liter fridge is in the backyard, uh, in the backyard, in the back seat, uh, running 24 hours a day. Uh, Starlink mini dish, which sits in the front and it's powering that. And that runs from about 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. when it automatically goes into sleep mode. Don't need it running while we're sleeping, it just sucks up battery. Uh, but it is on almost all the time. Um, in the morning, I have the Stoke Voltaics Joule kettle that I use to boil water for coffee and their um, cook system, their electric cook system for cooking. Uh, I'm not taking propane on this trip. So uh, all electric stuff, and that is gonna be plenty, plenty of power. Uh, now, I'm gonna pull everything, get it all set up, and I'll show you the different components that make up this system. To start with, we're going with the, the light time system here that I, I've got on the tailgate because I'm bench testing everything before I install it in the box all the way in the back. I've got all the wiring done. I'm just doing some testing to make sure the charging's working, the solar panels are working, and all that. So let's talk about what we have here. We have the... Uh, Lee time or light time uh, system here for the solar input and alternator input. So it supports both of those. So I have wires running up to the battery for charging when the engine's running. I've got it connected to the solar, which I have solar panels on the top for, connected to their 200 amp hour self-heating battery. And then this will plug in to a switch panel so I can control the different things I have in here. The fridge, diesel heater, the canopy lights, all those different things will be controlled by uh, a switch panel. So as that sits, the, the charger system, a 2000 watt inverter, and the battery, you're looking at about $1,291. So not super, super expensive. It's still pricey because, I mean, this battery alone is almost half that price. So 
There's other batteries to choose from. Maybe you don't need 200 amp hours. Maybe you only need 100 amp hours, or you want to look at different options for batteries. But this one right here is about 549. So it is about half the price of the whole system. Now, the good side is it's probably the most affordable system that you can get into and get started with and have everything work. You've got solar input, alternator input, all that stuff in a pretty compact package. There's two downsides to this. Uh, one is there's no Bluetooth monitoring, there's no display screen, there's nothing to tell you the state of the battery and what's going on. And this system maxes out at 30 volts of solar input. And right now I have a 400 watt solar panel on top that puts out 36 volts. And so by itself, it is too much voltage for this system. So we solved these things in two different ways. Uh, first off, I added this little voltage regulator here. Uh, this is about 45 bucks. And that allows me to set my input voltage to whatever I want. So I've got about 36, 37 volts coming in. I've got 30 volts going out, which is what this wants. So I'm limited in my solar panels by about half. I'm only getting upwards of about 170, 180 watts versus the 400 watts, give, you know, give or take, you know, 200 and, or 300 and change, what you would get on a 400 watt panel. So I'm not charging this system at my, the full capacity of my solar panels. It's fine because I'm not using that much power. Uh, I used this for uh, Overland of America, just temporary, and it ran everything just fine on solar for three days without really ever touching the battery. And that was just running a refrigerator in the back of here. For the monitoring, I have this little Ancel battery monitor. And I can kind of show you what that's like here. Let me pull up the screen for that. And so I can see my battery is currently at 94% and my voltage is 13.39 volts. So I'm in pretty good shape. I look on the top here, it says it's getting solar panel input, it's charging, and I'm good to go. So uh, a little while ago, I checked it was a 91%, so it's added 3% in the last, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. So with a few little accessories, I'm able to use this with the solar panels I had, which are Bouge RV bifacial panels. So unfortunately, I'm not getting the full output, but whatever. That's, that's fine for now. I can always upgrade this unit to something else, either from uh, Lightime or, you know, any of the companies out there. There's Victron Electronics, there's Renogy, there's Red Arc. Uh, all those have systems that at this point, with all the wiring done, it's just a matter of swapping out this main unit and going with whatever I want. So 200 amp hours, this should get me several days with no solar input, no engine running, just several days, three, probably about three days or so, basically in a blizzard condition with no sunlight coming in. That was my goal was to get to about three or four days of just power. And I think I've accomplished that with this. Now I need to test it and really see how much I'm gonna do, how much it's gonna use and all that, but we'll, uh, we'll be putting it to the test here pretty soon, seeing how long it can run a fridge that's just sitting in the back seat and all that, and how this does on the road. I'm getting ready to leave for a trip with uh, some friends, and this will be powering everything back here, uh, including a diesel heater and my CPAP machine and things like that. So it's gonna get used pretty good. But I think for, I, I would call this a good system. Is it the best system? No, I mean, you're gonna spend $5,000 or more for a super high-end system with touch screens and all that good stuff. But I wanted to start with something that was more relatable and approachable for someone who's getting started. And something in the $1,300 range, I think fits the bill pretty nicely. So you can do all this stuff and get it all set up. You don't need the power regulator if, you have solar panels that are not putting out more than 30 volts. 
you can get 300 watt, 400 watts, you know, you don't, you, you probably don't need 400 watts of solar, let me tell you. I mean, that's, it's a lot of solar panels. Um, but if you had 275 watts or 300 watts, you're gonna be pretty much just fine. And that's gonna bring that cost down a little bit to go with smaller solar panels and then not need the power regulator. So that's where we're at right now. We've got the box up there. I've got wires going into it. I just have some extensions coming out so I can finish doing all my bench testing before we get this thing installed into the Gladiator for the trip. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, we've got a good solution going on here and we'll get it out on this, this uh, five day trip that we're doing and we'll see how things go. Okay, so we made it back from our trip. Our five-day trip turned into a seven-day trip, which was great. And we really got to test the system out uh, the way I wanted to, actually. The first half of the trip, or three quarters of the trip, nice and sunny outside. Solar panels kept that battery charged all day long. And then overnight, running the refrigerator and the diesel heater, it would drop maybe 2%, 3% at the most. I would use like a, a Stoke Voltaics Joule for heating up some water for coffee. That would, uh, you know, take a little bit of battery, but within, you know, almost no time at all with bright sun, we were back up to full power. So I don't think I ever saw the battery drop below 96%, which was really phenomenal. And I'm getting the amount of power that I wanted to. The last bit of the trip, it was overcast. We even had snow coming down. And of course, solar panels aren't working, but the alternator charger keeping it nice and topped off. So everything worked exactly the way it's supposed to. And I couldn't be happier. I certainly have multiple days of being able to be out without any additional power, but the solar, even a little bit of trickle coming in is gonna help keep that battery charged up. So if you're looking for a dedicated power system that's not gonna break the bank, <laughs> this is definitely one of the most affordable systems that you can get. It's gonna keep things charged while the engine's running. It can take the solar panel input. It you know, is going to work and 200 amp hours is probably enough for the vast majority of people. Very rarely are you going to need more. And even in this rig where I've got LED lights, I've got the refrigerator, I run a diesel heater, I run electric cooking systems, I can, uh, charging my, my drone batteries, my camera batteries, my uh, phone, my laptop, running all those appliances, you know, every evening, I still have tons of power available. So I think this is really a good setup for most people. Uh, in the description, be a complete list with all the different links to all the different components. The, uh, really the only add-on that most people might want is that battery monitor because that's not built into the lower end uh, system. With the next level up in the light time stuff, you do get monitoring ability. So you don't need it for something like that. But on a low cost system like this, the battery monitor is really gonna tell you what's going on with your system. So I hope this was useful. If it was, please uh, give me a like below, uh, give me a comment. Let me know if this is a system that you would use or if there's a system that you would recommend for other people. Um, maybe in a similar price range or what has worked well for you. Now, if you're using the YouTube app and you really like this, down underneath the video is a new hype button that'll let people know that, hey, I really like this video and it helped me out. So appreciate if you do that. So thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. I will see you on the trails.